Welcome to Electron Line. It was discovered that electrons are able to jump from one orbit to another in what we call in almost instantaneous transition jumps because electrons can only exist in those certain energy levels and there can only be a very short period of time in which an electron can transition from one to the other and that's based upon the uncertainty principle. So for a very short period of time electrons can transition from one to another but when they do so they either absorb or give off the energy that's equal to the exact energy difference between the levels. For example when an electron jumps from a higher level down to a lower level it jumps to a lower energy level and therefore gives off a photon that has the exact equal amount of energy between the two levels. And in reverse when an electron jumps to a higher energy level to do that it must absorb a photon that has the exact amount of energy between the two levels. For example, from n equals 1 to n equals 2, the difference here would be 10.2 electron volts. So therefore, an electron must hit, the, uh, a photon must hit the electron of, and that energy of that photon must be exactly 10.2 electron volts to allow it to jump to the next level. In reverse, an electron can jump from the second level down to the first level by emitting a photon of that exact energy difference of 10.2 electron volts. So what we're going to do here is come up with a general equation that describes the photon either frequency or wavelength uh, as the electron jumps from one level to another. So we're going to use the equation that the energy of an electron is equal to 1 over n squared times minus ke squared over twice the Bohr radius and that the energy of a photon is equal to h times the frequency, of course h being the Planck's constant, which can also be written as hc over lambda because the relationship is that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So the frequency of the photon is going to be equal to the difference of the energy levels, delta E, divided by H, because after all, since the frequency can be written as E over H, E in this case is going to be the difference in the energy levels of the photons. So what we can then do is the following. We can say that the frequency of the photon that's given off is going to be equal to the difference of the energy between the two energy levels, divided by H, H being Planck's constant, and that means that's going to be the, uh, oops, not H, but the energy. Let's get rid of that. So it's going to be equal to the final energy or the energy of the orbit where the electron ends up being minus the energy of the, of the orbit where the electron came from divided by H. Now let's plug in what those are equal to. Since the energy of the photon can be expressed as this, let's go ahead and plug that in there. So the frequency is equal to the final energy, which is going to be minus Ke squared divided by n squared, but this is going to be the final n, the n number, or the quantum number n of the final orbit, times 2a sub naught minus, minus Ke squared divided by n initial squared times 2a sub naught. And the whole thing divided by h. Now the next thing we're going to do is as follows. Notice that f, if we divide it by the speed of light, can be written as 1 over lambda. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the left side by c and we're going to divide the right side by c. And in addition to that, we can say that this is equal to 1 over the wavelength. So that's typically how this equation is written. 1 over the wavelength is equal to this. And then we're going to factor out what's common, which is n, that's everything else besides the n final and the n initial. And notice that this negative will cancel out this negative, so we can reverse the order. And we can write 1 over lambda is equal to ke squared divided by 2a sub naught c times h, because we take these and put them in the denominator, times what's left. Here, this becomes 1 over n initial squared minus 1 over n final squared, like this. Now, what we're going to do is take a look at this quantity right here. If we write this on this side, let's write it over here. So we can write this as ke squared divided by 2a sub naught c times h. 
And let's plug in the numbers for that. I know we don't have a lot of room there, but let's try anyway. Let's move this over a little bit so I have a little bit more room. So k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. e is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. We're going to square that, divided by 2 times the Bohr radius, 53 picometers, which is 53 times 10 to the minus 12. c is 3 times 10 to the 8. And h is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. There we go. Let's see what that is equal to. Using a calculator, we get 9e to the 9th. I think I did something wrong. So, oh, multiply times 1.6e to the 19 minus, because I don't think I squared it, and there it is. 1.0. 097 if we get rid of the rounding error so this is 1.097 times 10, 10 to the, the 7th per meters if we look up the units this will be per meters so this quantity right here is equal to this and that's known as the Rydberg constant so this is equal to r sub h which is known as the Rydberg constant he was one of the scientists who worked on calculating the energies of these transitions. So then, if we rewrite that in here, we can say that 1 over lambda is equal to the Rydberg constant, r sub h, times the quantity 1 over n sub naught squared minus 1 over n sub f squared. And so this equation right here allowed us to easily calculate the wavelength of the photons that would be emitted or absorbed through those transfers of the electron from one orbit to another. So when it jumps to a lower orbit, the photon would be absorbed. The wavelength of the photon could be calculated like this. And if the electron jumps to a higher orbit, that means the photon would be absorbed. And again, the wavelength of the photon would be 1 over lambda, or, or could be calculated by this equation, where 1 over the wavelength is equal to the right Rydberg constant times 1 over the initial n number squared minus 1 over the final n number. Again, the n numbers here are the integer numbers representing the integers or representing the location of the orbits of the electron in the hydrogen atom. And that's how that equation was derived.